This is a pressure sensor. Ever wondered how it works? Stick around to find out. Welcome to Deltronics, the place where you get to learn about electronics. You get insightful reviews on the latest gadgets and software and access to interesting online courses. In this video, you are going to learn how this works. It's an MPS20N0040DS pressure transducer. As you can see, my camera isn't focusing very well at the moment, but you'll get a better look at it in the next slide. The pressure sensor in question is an MPS20 N0040DS pressure sensor. All the information on this page is also available on the data sheet to this specific model. The pressure sensor can measure pressures between 0 and 300 millimeters of mercury accurately. It can also output a maximum voltage of around 50 to 100 millivolts. The pressure sensor needs to be supplied with 5 volts of stable DC voltage. The pressure sensor accepts clean, non corrosive gases as pressure medium, such as air, hydrogen nitrogen or other non-corrosive gases. Water and other liquids are not permitted to be used on this sensor. Data sheet also specifies that the pressure sensor operates correctly between minus 40 to 85 degrees Celsius of ambient temperature. The data sheet also shows us the internal wiring of the pressure transducer. As you can see, the internal circuitry is in a Wheatstone bridge configuration. Pin 2 and pin 5 are the positive and negative terminals for the 5 volt power supply. Pin 3 and pin 1 are the output voltages and will vary according to the pressure which is exerted on the pressure sensor. Pin, pin 6 is essentially the same signal as pin 1 and in practice they will be shorted together to make a complete circuit. I will now go through the derivation for the Wheatstone bridge output voltage. As you can see, the internal circuitry of our IC is in the form of a Wheatstone bridge. We have four resistors, R1, R2, R3 and R4. We also have five pins, which were described in the last slide. Pin 2 and pin 5 were the input terminals for our 5 volt. DC power supply so the positive input is connected to the cathode of the battery which is the positive terminal and the negative input is connected to the anode which is the negative side of the battery one of the resistors will vary in resistance according to the mechanical strain which is applied to it. I have given this property to R3. There's a membrane in the pressure sensor which deflects according to the amount of pressure which is applied to it. Initially, this membrane is completely flat. The membrane has the variable resistor attached to it. When pressure is applied to the membrane, the membrane deflects in proportion to the amount of pressure applied. This causes a stretch in the variable resistor and the resistance increases. Initially, before the membrane is stretched, the resistance of the variable resistor is just R3. However, when pressure is applied and exerted on the membrane, the resistance of the variable resistor increases by a delta R. This change in resistance is what gives us the change in output voltage as pressure is increased in the pressure sensor. The resistances of R1, R2 and R4 remain fixed, meaning that any changes in R3 will not be cancelled out. Ok, now back to how the circuit works. What we have with the Wheatstone bridge is two set circuits connected in parallel. We have the first circuit, 
where the voltage travels through this arm of the circuit and back to the negative terminal of the battery and then we have this second arm where the positive voltage travels through this arm of the circuit and travels back to the negative ter terminal. Remember that pin 1 and pin 6 will be shorted together so the current will travel through pin 1 to pin 6 and back down to ground or the negative term. Once we have broken the Wheatstone bridge down into these two circuits we can now start deriving equations for the output starting with the output at pin 3. This circuit is simply just a potential divider circuit and the voltage at pin 3 is equal to R3 plus delta R3 since R3 will experience a, a change in resistance due to the change in mechanical strain divided by the total resistance in that circuit R2 plus R3 plus delta R multiplied by V in which is 5 volts since 5 volts will be traveling through each arm of the Wheatstone bridge. Now let's derive the equation for the second output in the second arm which is the voltage which will be on pin 1 and pin 6. To find this equation we must consider the current passing through this second arm of the circuit. Therefore the voltage at pin 1 and pin 6 is equal to R4 divided by R1 plus R4 multiplied by the input voltage for this arm which is 5 volts. Please note that for the pressure sensor to be balanced initially and for no voltage to be seen when no pressure is applied, R3 must equal R4 and R2 must equal R1. With these two equations Let's find our output signal voltage. Our output signal voltage is simply the voltage at pin 3 minus the voltage at pin 1 and pin 6. Therefore V out is equal to V3 minus V1 and 6 which is equal to 5 volts multiplied by R3 plus delta R over R2 plus R3 plus delta R minus R4 divided by R1 plus R4 We can prove that this equation is valid by doing a simple substitution if we assume that the Wheatstone bridge is balanced and that there is no pressure applied to the membrane, R3 will equal R3 and delta will be zero. 
if we now substitute that into this equation, we get that v out is equal to r3 over r2 plus r3 minus r4 divided by r1 plus r4. If we now remember that r3 is equal to r4 and r2 is equal to r1, we can easily see that res the resulting equation will be on this side r4 r1 r4 both of which cancel out therefore v out will be 5 multiplied by 0 which is equal to 0 which will be what you would expect if the bridge was balanced since the same output voltage will be present at pin number 3 and pin number 1 and 6. So now let's have a look at some of the output voltages we get from this pressure transducer. Remember I'm using an MPS20N0040DS pressure transducer. I've put the multimeter in the millivolts range of measurements and when there's no pressure applied to the diaphragm we get 6.3 millivolts output between pins 1 and pins 3. Now as you can see on the manometer I have increased the pressure to 300 millimeters of mercury which is the sensor's maximum pressure it can measure. I'm now going to measure the output voltage we get from this pressure. And we get 75 millivolts, which is in between the range that was specified on the data sheet. If you remember, the range was between 50 and 100 millivolts. We have 4.89 volts supply voltage, which isn't quite 5 volts, but should be sufficient for the pressure transducer to work properly. Hopefully now you have a better, more complete understanding of how a pressure sensor works. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video with your friends. Comment below which topic would you want to be covered next. And I'll see you in the next video.